afternoon everybody welcome back to the channel so uh, this field it was the field that we did some stubble raking in uh, for weed control and I'm really pleased with how it's greened up and uh, generated some nitrogen I wasn't anticipating that it's a nice side effect so uh, pretty pleased with the dark green color considering it's had no nitrogen yet so this field we're planning to just run with foliar N going forward and uh, I guess it'll come to about around 100 kilos of N by the by the end so uh, I've seen lots of uh, discussions on Twitter this week with regard to uh, what growth stage uh, wheat are at and whether it's worth going with a T0. Uh, we continue to be very cold at night. Uh, daytime temperatures aren't too bad, sort of um, uh, around 10, but it is, we're getting a frost nearly every night. We haven't had a rain for at least two weeks. Uh, we had that little bit of snow, uh, which was about 10 days ago, but uh, it's still very dry here, as you will see from the soil conditions. So what I plan to do is dig up one of these plants and uh, show you uh, and, and then have a look at what growth stage it is and we'll pick dig up a conventional crop and check what growth stage that is as well so a little bit of comparison this week between growth stages of conventional and a low input so as you can see it's a little bit patchy this field uh, it's a bit disappointing really i have to admit uh, it was going to it was drilled on the 20th of October which is the same day as the uh, conventional comparison but uh, it hasn't looked as good all the way through winter but let's show you how dry it is for starters you know there is no moisture in the top at all um, plenty of cracking starting I had planned to sow clover into this but as you can see with this sort of soil surface you're not going to get any germination so what i propose is i'll dig up one of these plants and we'll do a growth stage calculation okay so this is uh, the conventional field it's only about 500 meters away from that other field uh, it is better stronger land and it has looked better all the way through so I just wanted to correct myself. This was drilled on the 20th of October. Not quite sure what the other field was. So uh, this was our second last field to be drilled. And um, it looks fantastic at the moment. So uh, I hadn't got my fork with me. So I'm digging it up with a bit of a steel bar. But safe to say, uh, it was very, very difficult to uh, dig up the plant on the last field. So uh, we'll dig something up here, uh, looks like the rows are meeting and uh, we'll compare the two. So how is this dry and cold weather affecting our wheat? Well, this a table from the AHDB Wheat Growth Guide outlines when fungicide applications should occur. Here T0, T1, T2 and T3. So uh, fungicides uh, applications used to be numbered T1 which is growth stage 32 or early stem extension followed by T2 at growth stage 39 which is at full flag leaf emergence and finally t3 at growth stage 59 or just before flowering a few years ago after the price of wheat surged growers were advised to introduce a t0 foundation fungicide at growth stage 30 so this one here I can highly recommend Ben Freer Bath F video on YouTube about identifying growth stages. I'll put a link in the description. T0 would therefore be the first fungicide, usually for controlling rust. 
which would be applied at growth stage 31. And as suggested here, T0 would be scheduled for early April. Ben Giles of Bayer likes to suggest St George's Day, April the 23rd, as a rough guide for T1, the next fungicide, at growth stage 32. And as you can see on the AHDB guide, T1 is scheduled for the end of April. T1 is the first fungicide for controlling septoria, which is considered the fungal disease with the greatest effect on yield. But considering our wheat is sitting at growth stage 30 as of Sunday the 18th of April, this date seems very unlikely. So unless we get some warmer weather soon, our wheat is a good 10 days behind schedule at the moment. Mm -hmm.